of the earth and skies. We stand. Bless the Lord, forgive all our sins. May his mercy endures forever. <clears throat> Hear the commandments of God to his people. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of bondage. You shall have no other gods but me. Amen. Have mercy. You shall not make for yourself any idol. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not invoke with malice the name of the Lord your God. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Honor your father and mother. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not commit a murder. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not commit adultery. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not steal. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not bear false witness. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. Amen. Lord have mercy. Jesus said, The first commandment is this Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord, have mercy. God, whose glory it is always to have mercy, be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways, and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word, Jesus Christ, your Son, who with you in the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> O 
reading from the book of Genesis. The word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eliza of Damascus. And Abram said, You have given me no offspring, and so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him, This man shall not be your heir. No one but your very own issue shall be your heir. He brought him outside and said, Look toward the heaven and count the stars, if you are able to count them. Then he said to him, so shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. Then he said to him, I am the Lord who brought you from Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land to possess. But he said, O Lord God, how am I to know that I shall possess it? He said to him, Bring me a heap for three years old a female goat three years old, a ram three years old, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. He brought him all these and cut them in two, laying each half over against the others. But he did not cut the birds in two. And when the birds of prey came down on the carcasses, Abram drove them away. As the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and a deep and terrifying darkness descended upon him. When the sun had gone down, and it was dark, a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch passed between these pieces. On that day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, To your descendants I give this land, from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river Euphrates. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm today is number 27, which can be found in your bulletin. The psalm will be res read responsibly by full verse. Please join me in reading the bolded verses. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom then shall I be afraid? When evildoers came upon me to eat up my flesh, it was they, my foes and my adversaries, who stumbled and fell. Though an army should encamp against me, yet my heart shall not be afraid. And though war should rise up against me, Yet I will put my trust in him. One thing have I asked of the Lord, one thing I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To behold the fair beauty of the Lord, and to ask him in his temple. For in the day of trouble he shall keep me safe in his shelter. He shall hide me in the secrecy of his dwelling, and set me high upon a rock. Even now he lifts up my head, above my enemies round about me. Therefore I will offer in his dwelling an ablation with sounds of great gladness. I will sing and make music to the Lord. My heart is for my voice, O Lord, when I call. Have mercy on me and answer me. You speak in my heart and say, Seek my face. Your face, Lord, will I seek. I hide not your face from me, nor I turn away your servant in displeasure. You have been my helper. Cast me not away. Do not forsake me, O God of my salvation. Don't let my father and my mother forsake me. The Lord will sustain me. Show me your way, O Lord. Lead me on a level path because of my enemies. 
should see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. O Tabby, and wait the Lord's pleasure. Be strong, and he shall comfort your heart. Wait patiently for the Lord. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, join in imitating me. And observe those who live according to the example you have in us. For many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. I have often told you of them, and now I tell you even with tears. Their end is destruction, their God is the belly, and their glory is in their shame. Their minds are set on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven. And it is from there that we are expecting a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will transform the body of our humiliation, that it may be condemned to the body of His conform to the body of His glory, by the power that also enables Him to make all things subject to Himself. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for. My joy and crown stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join in singing hymn number 401, The God of Abraham Praise, verses 1 and 2. <laughs> said to Jesus, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. He said to them, Go and tell that fox for me, Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow. And on the third day I finish my work. But today, tomorrow, and the next day I must be on my way, because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it, how often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you, and I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Please join in singing to number 401, <clears throat> verse 3. <laughs> Oh, 
last few weeks, we've seen a crop of stories of sacrifice coming out of the Ukraine. That's always the case in wartime. We hear heartbreaking narratives of homes broken apart and lives disrupted by an unexpected conflict. Childhoods have been ended and families separated. That's certainly one kind of sacrifice. But there are other stories too. Stories of a different kind of sacrifice. I especially take heart when I hear about those ordinary people, Poles, Hungarians, Moldovans, and fellow Ukrainians, all who have gone out of their way to ensure the safety and well-being of their neighbors. Impromptu soup stations, food trucks, and transportation aid, all operated by ordinary people attempting to care for those suddenly in tremendous need. There are even now Ukrainian Americans who have dropped everything to go back and defend their homeland. These are certainly a glaring example of sacrifice. And perhaps this is the sort of thing which we expect sacrifice to look like. But it begs the question, what is to sacrifice? What does it mean? What does sacrifice do? In our world, sacrifice seems reserved for especially harrowing or challenging circumstances. But it hasn't always been that way. In the ancient world, sacrifice was everywhere. It was ubiquitous, in the home, in the marketplace, and especially around the dinner table. The logic of the universe was that everything came from somewhere, either a god or the gods. Sacrifice was giving them their share, or was a sign of appreciation, a sign of thanks and of worship. Food, therefore, has always been sacrificial. In order to live, we must consume life. Sacrifice takes this process up the cosmos. When human beings sacrifice, we acknowledge that there is something out there, beyond us. I remember a few years ago when then, the most blood-curdling thing Mark Zuckerberg was doing, was insisting on slaughtering his own meat. There was a good deal of consternation. He seemed vulgar. But he claimed he wanted to get closer to what he was eating. And in some ways, it makes sense. He's right. The modern search for convenience and our disposal-oriented pattern of consumption would lead us to believe that things don't need to be sacrificed in order for the world to keep spinning. Or that somehow we can kick out God from what we put into our bodies and how it is prepared. This confusion has even come into the church, especially when we consider the Eucharist, the Mass. In the past half century or so, there seems to have been a great confusion around what the Mass is. Do Christians worship at an altar of sacrifice, or do we celebrate a meal around a table? Is the Eucharist the mystical representation of the sacrifice of Christ on Calvary, pleading his merits before our Heavenly Father? Or is it just a meal? That all too comfortable just betrays just how far gone things have gotten. Because when we think that our altars are just tables, or more importantly, when we think that our dinner tables aren't altars, then we have a problem. It's a false dichotomy that we've erected and put up. Because when we treat meals as casually or inconsequentially as we do, 
we reveal something about how we view our bodies, the world that sustains us, and the God who made it. When we have forgotten that to live is to offer sacrifice and consume the consecrated spoils, can we say that we really get religion? Someone once said that the true value of a civilization is shown in how it treats its most vulnerable, the poor, the marginalized, the sick, and the elderly. Might we also extend this to the planet itself? Because in our current moment, that cocktail of neglect would indicate that something is wrong indeed. And that is why these passages from Genesis and St. Luke's Gospel are so important. Throughout Holy Scripture, we find examples of sacrifice. Abel is killed by Cain because of the word of Abel's sacrifice. Noah offers the Lord's sacrifice after he is delivered from the flood. But unlike other forms of sacrifice in the ancient world, the Jews understood that God did not need sacrifice. The Lord, being without a body, doesn't need to eat. He doesn't require a portion of the spoils, though he does warrant being worshipped. A bit of etymology. That's what the word worshipful means. When something is worthy, worthy of praise. God is great, so great that when we encounter him, praise should be our first reaction. The implication in Holy Scripture, then, is that sacrifice was instituted by God for us, to provide us with a way, the way, chiefly, to praise God. But it also had other functions. Sacrifice in Scripture was the means for God's people to ask for His mercy, to intercede for themselves and for others, to offer up thanksgiving, and a way to consecrate or make holy certain places, things, and times. But it also had one further and final function. Sacrifice sealed contracts. When we find God entering into a new contract or covenant, or relationship with his people, it is signified by sacrifice. That's what's going on today in our reading from Genesis. The Lord appears to Abraham and makes a promise. He has called Abraham out of Ur of the Chaldeans with the promise of land to settle. Now the Lord promises that Abraham will have descendants as many descendants as the stars. God is going to make Abraham's descendants into a people, into a nation, and he will use them to be a blessing for the whole world. In the ancient world, a nation needed three things. One, numbers, people, descendants. Two, land. Three, a God who dwelled with them in a temple. That's what makes up a nation. And God commits to his promise to make Abraham a nation with this seemingly bizarre display today. He tells Abraham to take a heifer, a goat, a ram, a turtle dove, and a pig. Take note, in the rest of Scripture, these are the animals which in both the tabernacle and in God's temple, the Jews will sacrifice to the Lord. Abraham takes these animals, cuts them in half, and waits, and waits, and waits for the whole day. There's no sign from the Lord. Imagine what must have been going through his mind. Impatience, boredom, Self-guessing. Until finally, 
the smoking fire pot descends. I mentioned this fire pot in my sermon for the last Sunday in the Epiphany season, the Sunday of the Transfiguration, when we considered the cloud that shrouded Jesus. This is the first explicit mention of the cloud in Scripture, the strange bright cloud that covers up Moses on Mount Zion and leads the people from Egypt into the Promised Land. It was the sign of God's presence in the world. And when the fire pot pass, passes through Abraham's sacrifice, it's like God signing his John Hancock, sealing the deal, binding him to his agreement. But take further note. This is a strange contract. Contracts are between two parties. But Abraham doesn't do it. God is the one who acts. He makes the promises, he prepares the conditions, and then signs off. No questions asked. God has committed himself to a gracious offer without expecting Abraham to try to make up for it. God isn't that fickle. His abundance is so great, even his contracts are one-sided. He pledges grace, Upon grace. Unfortunately, though, we know the story that follows. Despite God's promise and Israel's glories, the law, the prophets, the worship, the priesthood and sacrifices, God's children discard the Lord's grace and follow after their own desires. And it leaves them broken and in exile, waiting for a better day, waiting for the Messiah. That day comes with the arrival of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus feels the Lord's anguish over these centuries today. He says, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. God had promised to make Israel a nation and have them be his presence in the world. And instead, they had rejected his plan time and time again. But now, Jesus goes up to Jerusalem. The Son of God goes up to Jerusalem to share one final Passover with his disciples. He goes up to be betrayed, to suffer, and to die on the cross. But for as awful and presumably sacrilegious as this thing is, remember though, Jerusalem is the place for sacrifice. It is the place on top of Mount Zion where God is worshipped in his temple, and where the covenant between the Lord and his people is renewed. Jesus is going up to Jerusalem today, tomorrow, and the next day to sign a new contract in his blood, to make good on God's promises to Abraham, to inaugurate a new covenant. Jesus, son of David, of the branch of Jesse, of the tribe of Judah, son of Jacob, and descendant of Abraham, will fulfill God's promise to make Israel a great nation by expanding the boundaries of salvation to every living, breathing human being in every time and in every place. Take note of the character of Christ's sacrifice, though, too. Like the case with Abraham, God is the chief actor. It's Christ who comes and fulfills our desires. He assures us of the forgiveness of our sins, that he has conquered death, and that we have a place at the heavenly wedding banquet. The Lord acts first, and we are invited to accept the gift. 
His love is abundant, so abundant it overflows itself and seeks to bring us closer. I've said before that, our, that Lent is our journey with Jesus up to Jerusalem and that it is our life in miniature. These readings from Genesis and Luke, though, would seem to be a big asterisk on that idea. Rather, they highlight what Jesus did and what we can't do. Being who he is, Son of God, Word made flesh, he did something we cannot. He reconciled us with God on the cross. Being self-sufficient Americans and members of a church historically uncomfortable with the idea of a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. The idea of handing over our life to him, of sacrificing our autonomy. It sounds like a mortification, like a Lenten discipline itself. Perhaps that's why these readings have been appointed for us. Jesus' words and his resolution to accomplish his mission on our behalf should give us pause. It should stop us in our tracks and make us reconsider that self-sufficiency we hold on to so tightly. Sacrifice is a humbling thing. It makes us realize the truth that the world is ultimately in God's hands. And letting go can be some of the hardest spiritual work we can take on. We like our little anxieties, our preferences for things and our control over others. But they so often obscure the vision of Christ, especially in our neighbor. And Jesus calls us to sacrifice these small outposts of control for his sake. It's a good exercise. Show patience when irritated. Zip your lip when you feel like you can. Find one thing you can deny yourself. Or let someone impose or inconvenience something on you. Or even better, inconvenience yourself the good of someone else. Small acts of sacrifice have become habits of virtue. That's how we'll make our way. Out of Ur, down into Egypt, up, out of slavery, and into the promised land. From the wilderness to Mount Zion, the casting off the grave clothes, the sackcloth and ashes, and putting on the Easter glory. Amen. Amen. Stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made, but one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made a man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again and glory to show the son of the kingdom of death. kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. Through the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the cross. We believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. We pray for our presiding Bishop Michael and our Bishop Daniel in our diocesan cycle of prayer. We pray for the Marian Dean, the Nominations Committee, and Iglesia Episcopal, Episcopal Ascension of Padula Diocese of Guatemala. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. We pray for our President Joseph and his cabinet and staff, for Congress, for Tom, our governor, and for all our elected officials. Lord, in your, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Give us all in reverence to the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others, and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours, and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. We pray for those awaiting the birth of a child, especially Alex and Katie, Justin and Courtney, and Ryan and Molly. And for those celebrating birthdays this week, especially Erica DeAngelis, Les Vanilla, and Evie O'Donnell. We pray for those serving in the military, firefighters, the police force, and the health workers, especially Chris, Josh, Matthew, Keith, Jack, Joe, Jason, Ryan, George, Jared, Andrew, and Roman. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. We pray especially for those entrusted to our prayers, Jim, Andrew, Terry, Norman, William, Bev, Teresa, Alyssa, Peter, David, Dara, Rena, Edna, Jeff, Lisa, Lindsay, Ruth, John, Nathan, Bennett, Dorothy, April, Avery, Ralph, Matthew, Jonathan, Sharon, Samantha, Michelle, Kenya, Dan, Kelly, Wendy, Judy, Nathan, April, Ryan, Michael, Brooke, Anthony, James, Craig, Richard, Lily, Ryan, Fred, Dell, Kyle, Robin, Tony, and Bill. And those we named either silently or aloud. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. And I would like to offer to all those special prayers for Ukraine. My heart is so broken every time I look at the television, seeing all these poor people who really need our prayers and, and hope that good Lord come and helps them in their time of need and gives them the strength and courage. They're, they've been so unbelievable so far. It's just been heartbreaking for me. So 
So I just ask that we all keep it, keep them in our prayers every single day. We commend to you, mercy, all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. We pray especially for those you name, either silently or aloud. Lord, in your mercy. We have a prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church. And give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. <clears throat> Before we begin the announcements, I would like to uh, take a moment to uh, collectively express our gratitude for the ministry of Father Ernie Kirk, who's been with us uh, since the beginning. Um, and this will be probably the last Sunday before uh, I'm ordained to priesthood. And I really, um, well, also want to just express how much I personally have appreciated your mentorship. And I hope that uh, you'll continue to be welcomed here at our altar and in our pulpits and in our hearts and prayers um, as we go forward. So please, if you could all uh, come to hand and applause. Jesus who said it is more blessed to give than to receive. Please join us again in our offertory hymn, hymn number 448. Oh, love, how deep, how broad, how high. 448. Oh.
be with you. And also with you. And lift up your hearts. And lift up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin. By his grace we are able to triumph over every evil, to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee, and saying, supper he took the cup of wine when he had given thanks he gave it to them and said drink this all of you this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins whenever you drink it do this for the remembrance of me Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. In calling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts, sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. Let the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours. Almighty God, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ had taught us, we are able to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For I is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Lord be with you. And also with you. you. Pray. <clears throat> Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as the living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. You have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now to the world in peace. Grant us strength and courage to love and serve you, to let us in singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and the Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Please join in singing hymn number 675, Take Up Your Cross, the Savior said. <laughs> 